Greetings and welcome to the Friday Morning Vodcast podcast. You You want to wrestle? Good morning, all you Billy Bumblers. My name is Jason Andrew Oliveira, and I'm your host of the Vodcast podcast. Most mornings when I sit down to do these things, I have an idea in mind. I have some subjects I want to talk about. I have a list of things that I need to go over with you guys. But this morning, I have nothing. However, I know you're all waiting in great anticipation to watch the second half of the uh, Hot Challenge Oreo review I did yesterday. Um, it, it might have to wait a day or two. I'd rather keep you guys in, t- in anticipation rather than give you something that's half-assed. So... Let me get this thing together. Let me put some ideas together and we'll get back together and we'll talk about it in a few days. I don't know. You guys want to do some questions this morning? I feel like we're running out of that deck. When in doubt, go to the book of questions. That's a great book. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you, can you show me where the clown touched you? Um, can you urinate in front of another person? what does that mean? Like, I mean, like in a bathroom situation where like everybody's at stalls next to each other, like, yeah, I don't like it. I don't love it. But I mean, it's just something I've grown up doing and I'm used to at this point. If you're talking about like a trough at like a baseball stadium or outdoors where people are hanging out and you're talking while you're peeing or something. No, I'm very uncomfortable with bodily movements around other people. I don't even like to admit that I do them. As a matter of fact, I don't. Well, this is a simple one. If you walked out of your house one morning and saw a bird with a broken wing huddled in in some nearby bushes, what would you do? I would stomp it. Now, uh, any of you who know me would know that I have a love for all creatures throughout our world, and I want to see no harm done to any man, woman, child, animal, insect, anything, plant for that matter. Um, Unfortunately, we do have to survive, so we have to consume. But a bird, I mean, I would gently try to caress it into a box. I would give it a little bit of bird seed and perhaps some water. Give it a few days and hopefully he's back on his feet again. Or her. So this is an interesting one and it's kind of twofold. The second half of it's not here, but I know the second half is in this. Well, not that it's the second half of this question, but I feel like it's it's an extension of it. Would you add another year to your life if it meant taking uh, one from the life of someone who would be selected at random? Would it matter if you were told whose life uh, you had shortened? No, I, 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 I mean, it, the best years are behind me at this point. <laughs> as far as health and age goes, I'm sure there are many more wonderful experiences that I will have over the course of my life. However, I would never take someone else's life to extend my own. Unless I could become a god and then I could give them that year back. That's the only scenario where I would do bad things just so that I could do good things later on. I know that doesn't make any sense to any of you, but I'm a nerd. Um, the other half of that question is, is oh. the other half of that question, it, it isn't attached to this one, and I can't remember the exact wording of it, but it basically goes a little something like this. If you could end world hunger, cure cancer, end the AIDS epidemic, and racial inequality, would you take the life of a random person? That The stakes are a little different on that. When you're only getting a year for your life and you're taking a year from somebody, that seems very selfish and greedy. But to randomly kill a person to save billions of people possibly, that is a tough moral question. And it's not an easy answer, I don't think. Because it would be easy for you to say, no, I could never take somebody's life. Or, or easy to say, yes, I would save a million lives doing it that way. But it's, it's, it's like the second half of that previous question. You know, would it be different if you knew whose life it was going to be? Um, I guess in a, a, a weird world where things like this randomly happen, where Mixaplex shows up and he's like, hey, I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to make things crazy. Um, maybe in a situation like that, like, I mean, I have a family. I love my family. But if somebody said, hey, 
if you let me put a bullet in your head, it will end the world's problems, your family's problems, everyone's family's problems. Then, I mean, how can you say no to something like that? That's like making everyone's life a better life. But at the same time, you lose your own, you know? But I think that is an easier thing to answer. That's why it's phrased that way. People aren't meant to be comfortable when they answer that question. It's supposed to, like, provoke something inside you, this, this uh, animalistic, like, instinct to survive. If you look at it from a moral standpoint, the answer is still no. You should never take a random person's life, no matter what the circumstances are. At least that's how I see it. However... This is a this is, would be a scenario where, I mean, y you couldn't just make that decision quickly, I don't think. I couldn't. I mean, every life is very important. But if you're saving millions upon millions of lives at the cost of one, I mean, what is the cost of one person's life versus the masses? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers to this. If you have them, put them in the comments below. We'll talk about it in the next video. So a great epiphany just descended upon me. Um, an angel of the Lord came to me and said, Rocky IV is being re-released 35 years later in a director's cut. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little offended, sly. Um, Rocky IV is my favorite Rocky out of the all the movies. I, I love the first four. Beyond that, you know, they give or take. Some are okay. Some are terrible. <clears throat> but... Is it as weird to you as it is to me that out of all the movies, that would be the one he would go back to and be like, yeah, let's let's Lucas the shit out of this thing and change a few things up. And I'm like, is it necessary? Like, why not do a director's cut of the first one and then go through them if you really want to do a, you know, if you really want to redo four. I don't know. Maybe he's happy with the other ones. I'm happy with the other ones. I'm happy with four. Like, four is a masterpiece. It should not have been. He doesn't need to go back and touch up on it. No way, Jose. I don't know. I just, I, I had stepped out. To, we were done here. I We were done talking for the morning. I went to go edit the video. And then I checked my phone. And my good friend Jess had sent me a message about, um, we had a Zoom meeting last night. Doesn't matter. You guys don't care about that. Doesn't matter. Don't matter. And uh, I don't know, but for some reason, Rocky IV popped into my head. Maybe it's an Italian thing. You guys wouldn't get it. Anywho, I heard they're taking the robot scene out too. Happy birthday, Polly. That scene. What the hell? Like, yeah, it was a little weird when I was a kid. I remember that. But I had an attachment to that robot. You know why? You know why? You want to know why? <laughs> it's because that robot also was on Days of Our Lives. That's right. Eugene, I can't remember his last name, who was married to Calliope, actually made that robot on Days of Our Lives. I'm sure it's just the same model robot that they used in the same, probably the exact same one. I mean, why rebuild it? It's not like it's a fully operational thing. It was probably all remote controlled and stuff, so... I don't know how I get from talking about that to this sometimes, but we're here. So there's that. When you were growing up, did your parents, mother, father, sister, brother, whoever raised you, um, mark a doorway in your house with your age and your height? My mother did that for me growing up, and I remember it was the hardest thing to leave behind when we moved from Massachusetts. I remember just staring at it, and I, I know I have pictures of it somewhere. Or I'd like to think that I have pictures of it somewhere. I, I mean, now I would never leave without at least taking a picture of something like that. For that matter, I might even cut it right out of the wall. This door frame is fucked up over here. It is a visual history of you that dates back to whenever that first recorded height was. And to me, that's an amazing thing. Like, I, I, I honestly believe when you move into a house, if you find something like that, it, it's almost like, like, a, like a relic of another time, a history of another person. Like... I don't think even if I went to a new house and I saw that, I don't know that I could cover it over. Maybe I could. Maybe maybe I'm not as emotional about it as I think I am. Um, but I remember in Taunton, there were cuts, like little slashes, like not, not all the way up, but at the beginning, I think it must have been that way. Because as years go on, you do paint your house, but you don't want to lose that stuff. So I'm sure some of it had been re-handwritten over the years. When I think about that doorway, and I think about the doorway that's right, you know, behind me in this very room, it's, it, it's what those numbers and those lines symbolize, is each line is a year for a different child. 
and, and, and in those years, things happened and you have memories from those years. My lights are really weird. I don't know. There's some weird... All I'm saying is that that little strip of wood is an amazing thing to me. It is, it is a, it's, it's, it's years, decades in some cases, just on a wall, almost like a cave painting or something like that. Like it was left for someone else to see. I know it's just a recorded height level of whatever children are growing up at the house at the time. But to me, that is such a significant thing. I don't know why. I don't know why it's, it's really uh, so important to me, but I, I think it's pretty cool. People don't really, I don't know, I, I haven't written stuff in a long while. Like, I haven't written in a diary. I've never really had a diary, but, like, every now and again, I would, you know, collect my thoughts on something somewhere. I mean, it was never consistent. It wasn't like, a, you know, journaling or diary. I'm going to diary you today. Um, I don't remember what my point was. I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know anything. Well, now that I've managed to talk about a whole lot of nothing for 10 to 12 minutes, I hope you've had a good time listening to me. I have a good time doing these no matter what, so I'll keep doing them. If you guys want to watch them, I'm all on board. Um, give me some stuff to talk about. Give me a subject that's not too, you know, you know, you know. Um, something that you, you want my opinion of or my thoughts on. Um, and and I, I that might... Might be a fun idea for us. I don't know. If I see if I see ideas in the comments below, I'll know that's something you want to do. If I don't, I'll just cry. But if you guys love watching these as much as I'm loving making them, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and hit the little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make this. Don't forget to make somebody smile today, and you guys take care of each other out there. I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care, and boy howdy. <laughs>